Hello, and thanks to everybody for attending this uh, session at the last slot on the last day uh, in the summit in the great, great city of uh, Sydney. Uh, today's talk is about open stack images that fit your imagination, uh, deep dive into container images in Kala. Uh, my name is Vikram Hosko. I'm a software engineer at Cisco. Uh, I've been working in OpenStax since 2013. Uh, got involved in SX Folsom release, uh, mostly working in OpenStack containers, uh, Kubernetes recently. Uh, I'm also one of the core reviewers of Kala and Call Ansible. Uh, my co-speaker today is Rich. Rich, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Richard Wallum. I'm fairly new to OpenStack, about one year in. I uh, work for Lenovo, I'm a cloud architect. And I'm a core on uh, Cola Kubernetes. Cool. So let's get started. So the agenda today is uh, pretty simple. We've decided to um, break the agenda into four parts. Uh, first, we'll talk about uh, what's OpenStack Cola, uh, a general overview of OpenStack Cola, what it does, the architecture, and then I'm going to talk about how we can use Scala to deploy OpenStack quickly uh, without building images. Um, a new feature that was developed in Queens and, and part, part of Okata and Queens, and uh, we have more, more features for um, Queens and Rocky as well. And then Rich is going to talk about how we can customize call images to use custom code, internal code, instead of upstream code, and then a demo of deploying OpenStack on Kala Kubernetes. And at the end, we'll have a uh, uh, Q&A session. So the agenda is, um, what's OpenStack Kala? Uh, what OpenStack Kala solves? Benefits of containers in OpenStack? architecture of Kala, how to use Kala, and then how to deploy OpenStack in minutes. Uh, do not build, so we don't have to build anything. And then how to customize Kala images, and then a demo. OpenStack Kala. So Kala is actually a, an installer project. It installs OpenStack in Docker containers. Every service is in a container uh, with, with its config files uh, templatized using uh, Jinja, Jinja template. There are two ways to deploy Kala. One is the Ansible way, which we call call Ansible. And then there's the newer, cooler Kubernetes way uh, called Kala Kubernetes. Um, and there are three sub-projects in Kala uh, Kala, Kala Ansible, and Kala Kubernetes. So Kala is the main repo that has the Docker files for all the containerized services. Uh, Kala Ansible has the Ansible and Jinja templates uh, to deploy uh, the containers in the Kala project. And then Kala Kubernetes has the uh, Kubernetes orchestration, like Helm charts and jobs to deploy the containers on Kubernetes. Uh, what OpenStack Kala solves um, is it allows the user to deploy both binary and build from source. I haven't seen many installers that, that does that. Um, the user can um, install OpenStack using YAML or apt, uh, using binaries, or uh, pull tar.gz tar file and uh, build OpenStack from source. It's very fast to deploy. Um, using containers, I was able to deploy on five nodes um, in nine minutes. Uh, that's the fastest I've seen. Uh, I've used a couple of um, installers, and call was really, really fast as far as deployment time is concerned. Uh, easy maintenance, reconfiguration, patching, and upgrades. So after day one deployment, Kala can be used to reconfigure services, uh, patch services if, if there's a bug, and then also upgrade services to um, 
to a new release. Uh, I tested upgrade path from Liberty to Newton, Metaka to Newton, and then Metaka to Okata as well. And then containerized services are in registry, so we don't have to worry about where to store the images. Um, you know, one of the architectures in containerization is we get a registry where we push and pull images from. So once we have a working set of images, we can always save them away in a registry. And there's only one tool to do multiple things. So this is the other thing I like about Kala um, compared to the other installers I've used. Uh, it's a single tool or, or a single project uh, to do multiple things like installation, reconfigure, upgrade, um, patching, um, and also downgrade. Th there's a way to downgrade to an older release. The other thing I like about Kala is pinning to good or golden versions. Um, using Docker, we, we, we have a way to pin to um, certain working, um, working images with, with config files. We can tag working images and store them in, in, in the registry. So we don't have to worry about um, asking the developers in OpenStack what was your previous working version or finding the Git SHA when previous Neutron or Nova was working. Um, when we deploy OpenStack, if we like it, we can just tag all the containers and save them away in a registry. Um, so that way we can pin the versions and config files we, we like and we want for our deployment in, in, uh, in registry. And without containers, it's not possible to save golden versions of OpenStack services. Uh, this is from the the latest user survey, um, as you can see, Kala is a very popular project. It's on the left is the uh, one of the most used uh, projects and getting adopted in the, in the community. Um, it's, in fact, the only project that does containerized deployment, um, although there are other projects that start to do it. And then um, on the right is a percentage of, of the projects, like, like how, many, how, how are the projects used uh, by, uh, by deployers to deploy OpenStack. So Kala is actually at the very top. Yeah, this was, this was what I was talking about. So I've, I've actually used all of these um, installers here to install OpenStack over the years. And I really think uh, compared to all of these installers, Kala is the easiest, not just for installation, but for, for operation as well. Uh, for example, DevStack, I, I thought it's not production ready. Juju, I had to do some, I had some learning curve that I had to do apart from setting my, my hardware and, and config. Uh, PackStack, uh, of course, it, it I had to register my rel nodes. It wasn't a free version of the OS. Uh, Fuel isn't supported anymore. Uh, OpenStack Ansible, I, I, I like it a lot, uh, but it wasn't using Docker. Um, I kind of like Docker in, in Kala. It was easy for me to play with containers. Um, Triple O, I had to, again, I had the learning curve to understand the over cloud, under cloud concept. And Chef, Chef and Puppet, um, there, there are many repos in OpenStack. Uh, so there, there's like a Puppet repo for Neutron, Nova Glance, Cinder. Um, and then I had to learn from Ruby. So, but using Kala, all I had to do was provide the right config and then boom, everything worked. I got a working OpenStack cloud up. Uh, benefits of containers in OpenStack. Uh, as I said, it gives us an easy way to reproduce uh, golden state easily. No more works in dev stack. Uh, it works everywhere because containers are supposed to work in, 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 in almost every environment um, as far as um, reproducing the behavior of the service is concerned. Uh, any, any 
any environment that has Docker should, should be able to run, run, uh, run the uh, images. The images are production ready, so it's not like they are um, like in dev or test mode. They're production ready and they're official OpenStack releases. Very easy to override and highly flexible, so we can override Docker files. We can also override configs using, uh, using Jinja templates. And there's a new dev mode in Cola where we can actually change code of an OpenStack service and see it picked up in the container when, when the container restarts. So that kind of uh, speeds the dev and test cycle. And then Kala is a great way to have uh, portable tested replicate images in a registry. So we don't have to worry about moving uh, golden images. Um, it's built in registry. So if you're using Docker or Berkway, they replicate images geographically on the entire globe. So when we pull images, we're going to hit the nearest registry and pull the images from, our, from the nearest registry. <coughs> uh, architecture of Kala. Uh, we have a deploy node uh, that has Docker, Ansible, Docker Python, and Jinja 2. That's all that's needed on the deploy node. And then that's going to pull Docker files and Ansible playbooks, Jinja templates, um, Helm charts, and, and Kubernetes jobs from the repo, from the call repos, uh, call, call Ansible and call Kubernetes. And then the deploy node uh, must talk to a registry. If we are running a registry, there's an option to not use registry as well and use images on, on the deploy node locally. So that's the registry. Uh, the deploy node pulls images or layers from the registry. And then on the south of the deploy node is the actual OpenStack infra. Um, we have our control, we have our compute nodes, controller nodes, and storage nodes that, that are networked uh, in, the, in the actual recommended OpenStack uh, uh, format, like the, the topology. So there's a management admin network, there's an API service network, there's a storage data network, and there's an out of band network. Uh, and these nodes are called the target nodes onto which Ansible deploys OpenStack. And then we can use Scala to deploy, reconfigure, upgrade onto these target nodes. Um, and at the end of the Ansible run, we'll get OpenStack on all of these nodes. So for example, Compute would have like Nova Compute, Libert, um, Controller would have like Horizon, uh, Glance, HAProxy, and then storage like Ceph, OSD, or all the, or all the Ceph services. Uh, this is a zoom-in view of one of the, one of the um, target nodes uh, with Kala Kubernetes installed. So on the left, the big box is uh, one of the target nodes. That's a Kubernetes worker node. And um, going from bottom to the top, there's hardware, there's operating system, the Docker daemon, and the Kubernetes uh, bits of the worker node, which is Kubelet. Proxy CNI, and then all the OpenStack services in containers, uh, and then they all form the OpenStack cloud, and then on top is the customer application. And on the right um, are the Kubernetes master, and then the registry at the top. Uh, this is just a collection of all the logos, what color is made up of. So uh, we use Ansible, um, we deploy OpenStack, um, we dockerize OpenStack. Uh, we also deploy OpenStack on Kubernetes, and that's a logo of one of the CNIs we can use with Kubernetes, which is Calico. So we work with a lot of open source community. Uh, like I had to uh, talk to like Ansible and Docker developers when Kala moved to Ansible 2.0. Uh, I know Sergey and Kevin, they, they interact a lot with Kubernetes community. So we talk to other, other open source communities as well. Um, one of the important things to know is uh, many people think that Kala is just to deploy a vanilla OpenStack with default configs. Uh, that's not actually the case. Um, I've actually used Kala to do um, much advanced configurations uh, using Kala. Um, so I did all of this in, in Newton. 
using Kala. So we can do jumbo frames, SRIV, PCI pass through, massive scale. Um, uh, I, didn't, I didn't deploy hundreds of nodes, but Kala was uh, used to deploy on the OSIC cluster. Um, we can use Kala to use new networking technologies, not just OVS and, and Neutron's uh, NAT-based router. We can use open, open daylight, OVS DPDK. There's an asterisk next to VPP. We, we still haven't got VPP fully working. There are, pat, there are patches in review. Uh, OVN and if we tack our service chaining, uh, that's all possible using Kala. Uh, it supports plugins um, for Horizon. Um, it supports plugins for Neutron as well, uh, but we haven't gated it, um, gated Neutron plugins. Supports Ceph storage, supports Elasticsearch, Fluent, Kibana for logging, uh, Prometheus for cloud native, monitoring, alerting, and then also support customization and template overrides if, if the user works, wants non-default configs. And how to use Kala? Uh, this is slide about using Kala Ansible. Rich is going to talk about Kala Kubernetes. First, we install Ansible Docker, DockerPy on the deploy node. Uh, we install Docker, DockerPy on the target nodes. We clone the Kala repos. We build the images. And then we do the deploy um, using the command Kala Ansible deploy. And we, we just use the inventory file. And, and at the end of the Ansible playbook, we get a working OpenStack deployment. Uh, this is the new feature that was added in, in the previous release and at half of um, uh, Newton, uh, Okata, uh, where the user doesn't have to build anymore. Uh, we found out that the user was spending a lot of time just building images. So there is a way to pull pre-built golden images from Docker Hub and pull and run. So they don't have to um, build Docker files or even even see any Docker file. They can just pull and run. That's how Kala is tagged. Um, it's already over 100,000 pulls in Docker Hub. And the images are tagged per release on Docker Hub, so the user can pull a particular tag and um, run it. Using this model, I was able to deploy in nine minutes on five nodes, but when I built, it depends on the resources on my deploy node. Um, a basic compute kit needs like 35 to 40 images uh, with, with Cinder, um, and I needed around two to two and a half hours just to build them with, with 16 gig RAM. Uh, but when I pulled, um, I was able to deploy in just nine minutes. But pulling needs network, so I had a, I had a pretty good uh, pretty good um, bandwidth. And I was pulling from the Docker Hub in Richardson. That was my nearest uh, Docker Hub I was, I was hitting. Richardson, Texas. That's pretty much it. That's an introduction and overview of Kala Ansible. And Rich is going to talk about Kala Kubernetes and do a demo about how to deploy OpenStack on Kala Kubernetes. Cool. I'll get Rich. <coughs> Okay, I'm going to um, <clears throat> talk about building and orchestrating custom Kohler images and containers. And so really I'm actually building a custom Kohler image and then I'm orchestrating it as a container. And uh, I'm doing it on Kubernetes. Of course, there's lots of uh, op uh, different ways of doing this, but this is one that I'm interested in. Um, everything that I'm doing on the build side is documented. Um, with a lot more information than I'm going to provide in this session. So check this out if you're interested. Uh, like Vikram said, the uh, build tools have a plethora of options that allow you to customize your uh, build environment and, and what you're doing with those containers. Uh, these slides are available here. And I'm going to uh, deploy this with an orchestration tool uh, that I wrote, and it's just nothing more than a Python wrapper around cube admin, so nothing special at all. Um, it is in review with Kola Kubernetes, and uh, so if anyone plays with this uh, after this presentation and wants to give me some review comments, I'd appreciate it. 
but there's a lot of other orchestration options. Um, we have at least one Ansible playbook. This is one of them. It's also in review. It's uh, pretty awesome because it's aimed to be production quality and it can handle single nodes all in one. It can configure multiple nodes. It can do Ceph. Um, and it's very you know, relatable to a lot of people in OpenStack because it's written in Ansible. And both these tools are working from the deployment guide, uh, which is up to date and working. Um, and this deployment guide applies to uh, bare metal, virtual, you know, virtual environment. Um, so if you just want to go through and uh, stand up Cola, um, Cola Ansible or Cola Kubernetes, you can follow this deployment guide. Actually, this is for Cola Kubernetes, but there's the equivalent for uh, Cola Ansible as well. Okay, so why might you build custom Cola images? So first case example is you work for a company that builds and produces some form of a proprietary open stack, which is what most uh, companies do. So some services are touched, some are not. Um, for example, Horizon has plugins and add-ons that allow you to uniquely identify your customer's look and feel, but there's changes to many other services, you just want them out of the box. So Kohler, like Vikram said, it provides the tool to build Docker images containing an OpenStack service. And you can build a single image for a service or you can build the entire stack. It's entirely within your control. The second example is you're an OpenStack contributor, um, as most of us are, or many of us are, and you work with a service, say Ironic. The bulk of your work is done in DevStack, which is a simulator. So how cool is it to develop in an OpenStack environment running with production level code? It's actually very cool because I was testing uh, Master a couple of weeks ago and um, I found a cinder bug. And when I traced it down, it was a change that someone had added to DevStack to get over um, a problem. And then they took the workaround out and it was failing in a production environment. So little things like that creep in. And uh, it, that's why it's good sometimes to work in a production environment, even for development. And so we can do this because there's two sub-projects, Cola Ansible and Cola Kubernetes, and they provide the orchestration to run containerized OpenStack. And the third example is, um, and this is very relevant to the company that I work for, we develop drivers unique to our particular hardware most of OpenStack should just work, be very easy to build and orchestrate because your knowledge domain is in the hardware and in the driver, and you don't want to spend a lot of time standing up OpenStack um, to get to a point where you can work on your driver. So that's the thing that Vikram was talking about with Cola. The hard work has been done by someone else by uh, knowledge, uh, expertise in particular services, so it really facilitates a low cognitive overhead. So this is what we're going to be doing in a demo. Um, I'm gonna start with some development code. And it could, for example, be a Keystone with some new authentication types. Or Horizon, maybe you've got a custom logo or skin. Or anything else. You can just um, modify one container or multiple containers, whatever is your particular requirement. And we use Cola Build that provides the tools to build the images. So in this case, I'm building Keystone Horizon and something else. It doesn't even have to be OpenStack. And now I'm going to orchestrate it and deal with it. So in this particular demo, I'm going to use Cola <coughs> Kubernetes. So I'm going to run it on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so the first thing we do is stand up Kubernetes. And then we stand up OpenStack. But in this case, the services in the blue are pulled from Upstream, maybe Okata, maybe Pike, maybe Master. And then you can see Keystone and Horizon I'm going to install instead of the upstream environment. So you do your development in Keystone and um, you need to do some more development because it didn't work. So the process is, is you come all the way back and you regenerate your image. And because it's an existing running uh, Kubernetes cluster at this point, you just build the image and then you Helm delete and Helm install the container again. And it deletes it, cleans it up, and brings it back up with the new source code. Um, Helm, if you're new to Kubernetes, is the uh, package manager for Kubernetes. There are some 
things that you can do without rebuilding the image, various reconfigurations. So you have access to all of the config maps that you can, you can edit them through the kubectl API. So one or the other, and then there's other things that you can do as well being a container. But these are the paths that I've been working with. So I'm going to do a demo and it is pre-recorded. I recorded it yesterday because it does take about 30 minutes to run through and we don't have 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to start with the source code for Horizon, and I'm going to make a small customization change. I'm going to install Cola, and then I'm going to compile the Horizon Docker image with the Cola build tools. I'm going to store it locally. Um, if you refer back to Vikram's diagram, I'm not going to push it out to a registry or anything. This is going to be a very simple all-in-one. Um, typically, you would push to a registry if you were doing anything with multi-node. So you need to access those containers across a different network segment or if you're working with multiple developers and you want to share those images with them. So I'm going to bring up a Kubernetes cluster and verify that it works. Then I'm going to orchestrate a combination of Okata Cola containers that I'm going to pull from Docker Hub and the Horizon container with our changes in it. I'm going to see the results on the Horizon GUI. You can see this video here on YouTube. And the next sort of 30 slides after this are all the steps that I'm going to do in a demo. So if you want to repeat what I did, you should be able to. OK, so <laughs> live demo, right? Wow. All right, I don't have permission. Yeah, you have to log in, maybe. Maybe. Log in. Or, or I, can can just, log in. Yeah. I can just fetch my laptop. No, yeah, I can log in the problem. All right, go log in, because I shared it with you. Well, I'm already logged in. OK. Huh. Oh, I know why I don't have access to one your video, maybe. So let's sign out. And... Sorry about it. <laughs> Yeah. That's it. Yep. Of course, you have to remember your password, right? <laughs> Ooh. How about, how about running from YouTube? No, we're nearly there. You, 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 you we're nearly the there. Um, so Google gave access to his presentation, but not to the video in one of his slides. All right. Live demo, right? Nothing <laughs> better. Any second? All right. Are you logged in? So go to go there. Uh, slides. Yep, there. This is yours. Right? Yeah, that's mine. We'll probably open, open. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's yours. All right. <coughs> Ooh. How about a round of applause? <laughs> Deservedly half-hearted, thank you. All right, so <clears throat> I'm going to take us through the notes real quickly. You've got low battery as well. So. I need my charger.
All right. Let's go full screen a second. Just checking how big that looks because so can you guys see that? Fairly large screen. Okay. Just trying to go into full screen, but it doesn't want to. Yep. All right, so this is a sixteen gig uh, RAM VM sitting on a public cloud somewhere. Um, I've downloaded the Horizon source code. And the first thing I'm going to do is modify a local settings.py file to make a small modification. And there's a handy site branding um, variable that you can set, and I'm going to set it to Woot Sydney Summit Woot. I'm going to save this change. So that's a change in the Horizon config file, right? In the Horizon config, yes. So I'm now going to install Kohler and some of the tools. And these steps are only needed to be done once within your dev environment. So um, it's a one-time hit. So I'm going to grab Kohler from GitHub. I'm going to install the requirements. I'm going to um, install Kohler. And you see, it's all just standard pseudo pip install stuff. Um, and now I'm going to install Tox so that I can generate the config okay. file. So once Tox is installed, again, that was a one time. Now I'm going to generate a config file for me to modify the Cola build. So now I'm going to um, edit this config file. And I'm going to look for Horizon, because that's the container that I'm modifying. And again, it's a one-time thing that you only have to do per uh, image or container that you're modifying. OK, so the reference I'm making here is it's a local. It's going to be a local source. I point to the location. And I give it a reference to help Cola build know what to build against dependency-wise. So I'm building against Okata in this case. All right. So I've modified the um, build configuration file. So I'm going to build. Before I build, I'm going to look at the um, images that I already have. And you can see that there are two images. One is tagged 400. And you can see that it's seven months old. And that's the original Okata image for Horizon that's sitting on Docker Hub. It just happened that I pulled it down. And there's one that I apparently built 31 minutes before I ran the demo, probably running the demo. And uh, so I'm going to build one with a new tag. And so I'll just pause here a second, because it tends to fly by. So I'm running a build up PyTool in the Kohler repository that I, that I uh, get cloned. Um, the Kohler build tool is also installed. I could use that. Um, I'm telling the build tool that I'm going to be compiling from source and that I'm interested in Horizon. If you were modifying more than one image, you would add them just in a space delimited line here. And then I'm pointing to the config file that I just edited. And um, I'm going to, I also point to a log file. And I'm going to give it a unique tag um, that I can refer to for the rest of the deployment. So I'm going to call it 702. All right. So um, this, this is one of the things that takes a little bit of time, especially the first time you run it because it's not cached. When you rerun it, it's a lot quicker. Um, it's also slow because I'm running it from a, a VM, um, a pretty limited VM. So I just speed it up a little bit. But basically, it's going to build a container. It's going to install all the packages that it needs. Um, basically, someone's done the hard work for me to make a Horizon container work in Okata. And I'm just making a small change. So when, it, when the build tool finishes, you get a lot of information. But I'm basically looking for success, successfully built images. 
which in this case it was. But just to verify, I'm going to look at the Docker images again and hope that I find a Z702, which I do, and you can see that it's now 21 seconds old. So now I'm going to um, clone my tool, and I'm going to create a directory, a working directory to work from. And uh, let's take a quick look at this tool. Um, it's not terribly interesting, but it is kind of fun. So uh, I designed it to be very simple. Um, it just needs two inputs. It needs a management interface and another interface for Neutron. And so when, if you're doing this on a VM, basically you need something that connect to, can connect to the outside world. You need another interface that you're going to dedicate to Neutron. So you really don't want an IP address on there. Um, but as most VMs come exactly configured like that, you're in luck. Um, however, everything's overridable. Um, you can put in your own management IP. You can put in a VIP for Keep Alive. You can specify, specify what image you would like to run, Okata, Pike, Master. They all work. You can mess with the tool versions as well if you're really interested. Um, <clears throat> the tool cleans itself up between runs. Um, and there's just a few other things that are interesting here. Um, it does have a verbose mode. Chucks out a lot of information, uh, which is kind of fun, as you can see what Kubernetes is doing. It has a demo mode. If you run it in demo mode, it literally talks you through the whole process. Um, and it has a create network mode, <laughs> which tries to bring up OpenStack Neutron at the end of the process. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't, depending on how you've configured and where your VM lives. And um, there's an option to not override any of the things that you've cloned. You can tell it which base container to use. And the option we're going to use is edit config, because we're going to make a small config change to our cloud.yaml to point to the source image instead of pulling horizon off Docker Hub. So I'm going to run my tool here. And you can see the two interfaces required with the edit config. And that's really as simple as it gets. Um, so we're going to start by bringing up a Kubernetes cluster. And you're, you're told that you can edit the cloud.yaml and the global.yaml. You see your interface is reflected. Um, so everything looks good here. You can see that it's OpenStack version Okada and the base version of the containers are, is CentOS. So you can pull Ubuntu if you want. Um, so what's going to happen is uh, Kubernetes is going to be brought up. Now remember, it's just a wrapper around kubeadmin. Um, so it's very simple. The cube admin's doing all the clever stuff, not me. Um, so I'm going to bring it up, and I'm going to watch all my pods come up using uh, the watch command and I'm going to look at all namespaces. And I'm going to speed it up in places where it gets a little bit slow. So you can see kubectl, something's happening, but it can't connect yet because we haven't done any certification. Um, but now we're up. Kubernetes is beginning to get a little bit happier. Um, and now it's going to try and bring up the basic infrastructure. So at this point, it's all sort of standard stuff. Um, we haven't touched OpenStack. We haven't touched the uh, custom Horizon uh, image in any way. You can just see um, Kubernetes come up. And I jostle it along a little bit there. Now I'm installing the SDN. Uh, in this case, I'm doing Canal, not Calico. It's a little bit simpler for an all-in-one. Um, works very well. And basically, we're watching Kubernetes come up. And then I create a uh, test pod to verify that my DNS is working, which is always a good thing, because if it's not, you're probably not going to get much further. Um, and so that was, that was Kubernetes up and running. And uh, it took um, a few minutes. So now I'm going to install OpenStack. Um, and so basically, this is running through the uh, deployment guide that I reference you to. So it's installing a tiller pod into the uh, Kubernetes cluster so that we can render our Helm um, YAML files. And uh, that successfully came up. Um, I've labeled it as an all-in-one by telling it it's both a compute and a controller. Um, it offered to allow me to modify my globals. I don't want to. I don't need to this time. And now it's going to do a whole bunch of uh, building of the various charts and uh, config maps that Cola Kubernetes needs to continue, 195 of them. OK, so got past that. And um, I can now edit my cloud.yaml, which I'm going to do. And first of all, I'm, I'm forgetful. And you'll see I uh, actually do this twice. 
I was about the 300th time I'd run through the demo at this point. Um, so my target um, tag is 702 that we generated. And I'm quite proud that I put in 703 here for some reason. But if you did, you would get an error when, the, uh, when, when uh, OpenStack comes up, not finding that uh, tag. All right, so we're nearly there. I do do 703. I go back in, and then I was like, eh, what am I talking about? 702. Go back, modify that. OK, I'm losing minutes here. Well, seconds, I guess. All right, in the top window, I'm ready to continue. And now I'm going to install OpenStack. So I'll start with Open vSwitch. I can watch this run for a bit. Still haven't touched Horizon, but it's going to happen pretty soon. Um, MariaDB comes next. Once MariaDB is up, then we're basically ready to throw most of the other services at Kubernetes and just allow the entry points to take over and coordinate everything coming up. So I, you don't have to watch the whole thing. I've jostled it along um, in places. So it's not completely um, boring. But let's, let's watch it finish. How long the video is still? Uh, a couple more minutes. Okay. Cool. OK, so the rest of the services are being injected into Kubernetes Can using Helm charts and the uh, cloud.yaml. So you see Horizon in a bit. It's kind of fun to watch it come up the first few times with the kubectl get pods. You can just see that all the work that Kubernetes is going through instantiating. So um, I injected Horizon and then Neutron, and then we wait for all of these uh, pods and jobs to come up. All right, <clears throat> nearly done. And once this is done, we're going to um, bring up Nova to coordinate everything. And then you, we're very close to having a working OpenStack running on Kubernetes at this point. To how long did the deployment take place? Oh, OK. So if you look at the Cola DNS test, we're 15 minutes in. OK. Um, but remember, I spent like three, four minutes editing files and pausing right. it. Um, but it's still got a little ways to go to bring up Nova. Um, but you know, when I do this on bare metal, it's just a few minutes. If right. it's, you know, like you say, if the networking's good and so on. All right. So. Nova Control and Nova Compute um, has a little bit of work to do to come up and coordinate. Uh, remember, this is Okata, um, so it doesn't have all of the cell changes. Mm, we're done. So we are 19 minutes in from Kubernetes coming up. So it's not quite as fast as your nine minute example. But. Right. All right, so um, OpenStack came up. We, you know, I, I print out where to access the GUI with the password and the admin, and let's pause it right here. All right, so you can see by hovering over the tab, login Woot Sydney Summit Woot. So basically my custom container is running in Cola Kubernetes with the change that I made to Horizon. And that's from the 702 tag, right? That's from the 702 tag, yep. All right, so. Don't want to watch it again. <laughs> Had this before. Well. All right. Hold on. All right. Let's wrap it up with um, how to get involved. So, all right. So. Obviously, Coal is a very established community. Um, it's been um, uh, around for many years. Um, Cola Ansible, as Vikram showed you, is heavily used in the industry and in a lot of education facilities and so on. A lot of other projects are using Cola images. 
um, they got there first. Um, but just like any other project, they need people to join in. We need people to do uh, Cola Kubernetes. Um, so we follow the standard Garrett workflow. Our IRC channel is OpenStack Cola. We still use Launchpad for now to track bugs and blueprints. Um, please attend our weekly meetings if you're interested and contribute code. And our mailing list is the standard OpenStack dev mailing list with Cola in parens. Cola in the subject line. Yep. And if anyone is in the Boston area, uh, I am in the team that runs the container, uh, Boston Container Meetup uh, once every two weeks. And sometimes I give talk about Kala in, in those container meetups. So uh, if anyone wants hands-on help in one of those container meetups in the Boston area, uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, help with Kala in one of those container meetups. Uh, we're now ready for any questions. Any questions, anyone? That means we did a good job. Yeah. Let's go to the opera house, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay.